So hello and welcome to my presentation, Get With The Times in Email Send Testing. My name is David Brandeis and firstly, before we start, I would like to thank all the sponsors for making this happen. So today I will talk about mainly the all possible testing methods that we have for email test, email send testing. I will then uh, compare them between each other. Uh, I will uh, show some of their benefits, drawbacks, and when to use them. Lastly, I will go, uh, we will show some of its testing possibilities, the testing possibilities of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. I would love to go into Pardot and other clouds, other products, but unfortunately, we do not have time for that today. So getting right into it. Firstly, I would like to explain why do we test at all? When we test uh, or when we want to send out some kind of an email or any other kind of content, we usually set up an email subject, the text, the header, the images, buttons, etc. And we have some kind of an assumption what, uh, how good is it gonna perform? But we do not have any kind of real data. It's all assumptions. And that is exactly why we test. We want to test different versions, different layouts to try and figure out what is the best performing version to reach the best possible open rate, click through rate or unsubscribe rate or any other kind of KPI that you want to try. So what kind of testing methods do we have? Probably the most common one is AB or ABN testing. So with the AB testing is, is very simple. You have two different versions of content. It could be uh, different email templates, uh, subjects. We could even go beyond test SMS messages, push messages, et cetera. So when we take, for example, the email templates, we will have some kind of a subscriber list. From that subscriber list, we will take uh, two different sample groups. So we could take five or 10% and divide them into two groups. And to each group, we will randomly select, uh, randomly send either A or B uh, version. Uh, sorry, meaning that we will randomly select the people and then we will send to the first group, the A version and the B version to the second group. We will decide on some kind of a testing period. And after that testing period ends, we will see which email perform better and that email we will send to the rest of our subscribers. That is A-B testing in a nutshell. The A-B-N testing would mean we have more versions of our email to send out. Going further, we have multivariate testing. Multivariate testing is very similar to A-B testing, except that we usually have some sort of unified layout that we already chose, either based on A-B testing or simply uh, whatever we find the best. However, we want to uh, finalize the details. Like for example, here you can see different download now buttons. You can see different colors. You can see that there are two different uh, forms, input forms, which have different inputs. And so in order to finalize these details, we use multivariate testing. Uh, the only downside is, is that we have a lot more versions. Since for example, in this case, we are testing two different colors on a button, two different, uh, um, two different uh, input forms. That means that we have four different versions in total. Now we are getting to the multi-armed band testing. Um, multi-armed banded testing is a little bit different than the two previous ones. Imagine a scenario that you are in a, in a casino, for example. You are going into the casino to play machine slots. So each machine slot has its own arm that you need to pull in order to win some money. In a perfect scenario, you would just keep pulling the, the one arm of that one machine slot that keeps making the most money. However, when we get into the casino, we have no data. We have no idea which is the best slot machine. So one after another, we are randomly pushing those machines and we are trying to figure out which is the best one that is the exploration phase and then slowly once we have the better performing once we find out which is the best performing uh, slot then we keep pulling the arm of that slot 
that is the exploitation phase. And we can do uh, exactly the similar thing uh, when, we, when we have emails, for example, when we want to test send emails. So just to start off, uh, there are different types of bandits. The one that I'm going to describe now is the epsilon greedy, but we have also other types like the upper confidence bound, the Thompson sampling, the Bayesian bandits, and many, many other. The epsilon greedy is, the, is usually the most simplest one. Uh, we really have just the, just the exploration phase that I described that works pretty much like the A-B testing that we described in the previous slides. And uh, that means that we are 20% of the time or any other percent that we choose, we are randomly selecting uh, an email template that we want to send to a subscriber. The other 80% of time, we are exploiting the currently best performing email. So somewhere we are keeping the real-time data of which email is performing the best, either if it's based on open rate, click-through rate, or unsubscribe rate or any other KPI, we are going to be 80% of the time, we are going to be exploiting the best performing email. Going beyond that, uh, you know, there is artificial intelligence. It helps us in so many other unique ways. There are recommendation engines, predictive catalog sorting, lead scoring, there's the send time optimization, you know, engagement frequency optimization, probability models, uh, you know, segmentation and, and many other stuff, you know, the AI can help and can go not just, you know, based on the current data that we have, but also based on the historical data. So there are really, really uh, uh, many, many ways that the AI can improve the, the personalization for the customer. So now I'm going to talk a little about the method comparison. So first off, we have the A-B testing versus the multivariate testing. As I already mentioned, the, the A-B or A-B-N testing is usually used for testing larger changes on a single email. So usually when we have uh, you know, uh, two or three different layouts that are completely different, uh, we use A-B or A-B-N testing for that. Uh, if we wanted to test single element or multiple elements on a, on a unified layout, we would use multivariate testing for that. Uh, the downside of the multivariate testing is that you need a lot higher traffic because as I already mentioned, you may end up with a lot more versions because you want to test all the variations. Um, that means you also need a lot of traffic in order to each reach some sort of a statistical significance. But it helps with the layout details and it really will polish your final design. AB or ABN testing, on the other hand, uh, is typically faster than the multivariate, also because you don't need as much traffic as the multivariate testing. Now, AB testing versus band testing. So here in this graph, you can see the A-B testing on the left and the bandit selection, the bandit testing on the right. A-B testing is pretty straightforward. As I explained previously, let's imagine we have three emails, three options. We send these emails out to three sample groups. We wait, for example, five weeks, and then we decide, okay, uh, this email performed the best. So the last week we will send out that one email to the rest of our subscribers. In the bandit, as I already mentioned, we slowly, we focus more on the best performing version. So there is some sort of exploration phase where we are trying to figure out what is the best performing version. We are testing if, for example, this version is better than the second one. But more and more, uh, based on the current data, based on the open rate, click rate, etc., we are finding out that this one version is the best one and we send more and more and more of this version to our, to our subscribers. That way you can see that the bandit testing actually helps minimizing the opportunity cost and thus bring a higher value to the company. However, does that mean that we should always and only use just bandit testing? It doesn't necessarily have to be. So what are the ideal scenarios for bandit testing? 
Mainly it would be short-term testing. So testing for short-term campaigns that, for example, that will happen in a week and, and last uh, only a week. Uh, these kind of testing uh, are ad ideal for bandit testing because um, if you wanted to use the other testing methods like ABN or multivariate or any other, um, it would mean that you need to reach the, the statistical significance and you would need a large sample. You would need a lot of open rates and click through rates to uh, open rates, uh, I mean, sorry, opens and, and clicks in order to find uh, what is the actually best performing template. And then there is also the long-term testing, the fire and forget type. And that means you could basically just set the band and test, the band and test, and then just leave it and do not touch it anymore. Because the bandit, uh, it will always focus on the, on the version that is performing the best. And that way you can just leave it and it will always keep sending that version out. Uh, the ABN testing, multivariate testing is, is used in those other scenarios, like for example, the medium term testing. Um, so when bandit is not viable or it's not suitable, when you can use AB testing, just go for AB testing or multivariate testing. Uh, the audience, uh, I also already mentioned, but just to sum it up, um, with multivariate testing, you need a larger audience because usually you will have a lot more versions to test. And lastly, uh, it is multivariate testing. It is more, uh, more suited for testing multiple versions of an element or several elements on a unified layout, whereas A-B testing is better for testing completely different layouts. So now we are getting into, into Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So first off, we have the email studio A-B testing is the standard testing that allows you to choose uh, just two versions of your content. You may test, uh, I don't know, uh, emails, individual templates. You may test subject lines. Uh, you may test uh, several other things. Uh, the most important thing is you can choose who will be the recipients. You can choose uh, from different lists. And then uh, based on your subscriber list, you will decide how big should the sample groups be. So here from uh, 1100 subscribers, we have two, uh, two groups, email A and email B. So we are sending out emails. And to uh, 100 subscribers, we will send email A. To the second 100, we will send email B. We will decide then on how long the period should last. And then uh, after the testing ends, we will say, okay, we want to send this email to the rest of our subscribers. Now, getting into Journey Builder. Journey Builder is the place where you can build customer journeys and thus you can really uh, personalize the experience for the subscriber. Uh, there are multiple elements you can put on this canvas and thus make you know a sort of a decision tree of what will the individual experience look like so you have on the left for example several flow control elements such as random split which can be used for the abn testing decision split based on some data that you have engagement split based on um, engagement data such as open rate uh, click through rate etc um, you also may way beyond just email testing, you may test uh, SMS messages, uh, you know, push messages, etc. You may also connect to uh, CRM to sales cloud. You may also uh, update your, your contact data and, and much more. Uh, what I want to really show here is the path optimizer, which is one of the flow control elements. And the path optimizer allows you to determining what is the winning path based on your engagement data with the subscribers. So it is similar to, to AB or multivariate testing, whereas you choose the engagement metric to measure the winning path. So it could be click rate, open rate, unsubscribe rate. And then you decide how long you want to monitor the engagement before a winner is chosen. So you could decide on three days, 
for 10 days or more days. Then uh, either the winner will be automatically selected or you can also select it manually. If you select, let it, uh, if you decide that you want it to be selected automatically, you don't have to take care of anything. And essentially it also could be a type of uh, fire and forget, um, fire and forget uh, testing uh, in, the, in the marketing column. However, you can go way beyond just the path optimizer. There's also, uh, you can build up any kind of your own custom testing in the journey builder. Since you have the canvas and many of the flow control and other elements available, you can set it up based on your needs. Here, I created a, a very simple journey that is um, based on the multi-arm bandit testing. And so at the beginning, we have some sort of an entry source, a subscriber will come into the journey. Then we have the random split, for example, those 80%. And if it's chosen, if it decides to go that way, then we have a decision split, which will look at the current data in the marketing cloud. And based on the current data, like one of those KPI metrics, such as open rate, it will decide what is the best performing email and it will send out that email. The other 20% in the random split is used for the exploration phase. And we just basically use the AVN testing to randomly choose one of the emails and to try to figure out if by any chance there is another email that could perform better than the other emails. So this is one of the examples of, the, of how the multi-arm bandit testing could be implemented by your own, uh, in your own way uh, in Journey Builder and Marketing Hub. However, a little coding uh, must be implemented in order to um, mainly in order to calculate the, the best winning email and to be, to be sending the best version. So now we are getting more into the, into the artificial intelligence. And um, we have the Einstein split. Einstein is the name for the artificial intelligence uh, inside Marketing Cloud. And the, the artificial intelligence, the Einstein actually, it predicts the user behavior and then using the Einstein split in the canvas in Journey Builder, we can act upon of the we can act upon the, the predicted behavior of the user. So for example, uh, we could set up the Einstein split based on open rates. And if the user is most likely to open rate, he will go the first journey. If he's not, then we could decide uh, any, other, uh, any other way to personalize the journey for him and make it really unique for him in order to increase sales and bring more value. Then there are the, then there are the, the Einstein recommendations. Uh, the Einstein recommendations are used to, to come up with some sort of product or other related content uh, recommendations for the subscriber. So it could be also uh, blogs, articles, it doesn't necessarily have to be just products. And we could use those, for example, uh, typical use cases could be, you know, to cross sell based on related items to increase sales or to, to nurture uh, subscribers with relevant content. Moving on, we have the Einstein engagement frequency. The Einstein engagement frequency uh, helps uh, testing how often uh, should we send emails to the subscribers. Often, you probably know this too, uh, we receive hundreds of emails daily from many different places, and sometimes we may feel overwhelmed. So this is exactly what Einstein engagement frequency is trying to prevent, is trying to figure out how often should the emails be sent and which subscribers are uh, receiving too many emails. We have also the Einstein send time optimization. That is a little bit different from the uh, engagement frequency. And in a way that this is trying to figure out what is the best time to send an email. 
So for example, if we send an email at 3 a.m., no one will open it, everyone is sleeping. If we send an email at 9 p.m., everyone is getting ready to bed or, or having late dinner or, or anything else. And they will again, not open it. So using this send down optimization, we are trying to send the relevant content at the right time to the subscriber. Lastly, uh, I would like to talk about the Interaction Studio Einstein Decisions. The Interaction Studio, or formerly Evergage, is the solution for um, real-time personalization and interaction management. And it helps to enhance the power of marketing cloud using machine learning capabilities or real-time cross-channel personalization. So the Einstein decisions, uh, as you can already see here, they are one of the contextual bandits. A contextual bandit is another type of, of bandit that you may use to, uh, to bring a better personalization to the, to the recipient. And here you are choosing what should be the target of band. So it could be a conversion, it could be clicks, it could be a goal completion. And based on that metric, the bandit models will learn to optimize in training. You may also decide on, on what features you want to be recorded and trained on when machine learning models are built. So we have these Einstein decisions, but where are they actually used? Uh, Interaction Studio also has this really cool functionality, which are open time emails. That means that the emails actually render when the subscriber and the recipient opens the email. So they are not rendered at send time, but rather on open time. And that makes, you know, using, if we take the Einstein decisions together, uh, that makes it really a unique real-time personalization for the subscriber and brings a lot more value, brings a lot better experience. Thank you. That is everything for me and goodbye.